Okay, so welcome to this video about uh, my binding jig, the, this actual jig to, to be able to, uh, to route the binding channel uh, all around my, my guitar body. So uh, I decided to make this video just about the jig itself. You can actually uh, see me use the jig and cut the channel on my next video. Uh, but this one is just about the jig itself. It's actually pretty basic. Uh, when it comes to, to cut this, uh, this channel around the guitar body, it's, it's actually a step that I've been scared about for, for a while. I thought about this for, for months before I was uh, up to this point. And I, di I really didn't want to, uh, to screw up on this because I've been working for many, many hours on those bodies and uh, actually using a, a rotor that spins a, a cutting a bit all around the, 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 the body is pretty scary. So you have to be sure it will only cut uh, what's required. So I came up with this jig. Actually, I did not came up with this one. I actually, I just kind of copied what I, I've seen online. Uh, it's just actually a 90 degree uh, bracket of some kind with this little uh, thing here that will, where I can mount my rotor uh, and it just, slides over on uh, on real uh, drawer slides those are just drawer slides that i had uh, lying around i did not use those uh, so i used I, I first tried with just one it was wiggling a little bit so i, I used two uh, it's now pretty uh, sturdy and uh, let me just uh, uh, mount the rotor on this and show you uh, how it works Okay, just before I, I show you the rudder on the jig, let's talk about the, the bit I'm using. Uh, I actually uh, looked at uh, online and came up with this, uh, this thing here. This is actually uh, two pretty standard rudder bits, uh, flush trim bits. This is a half inch one and this is a three height one. So uh, I figured that uh, between half inch and three heights, there is actually one height of an inch, an inch different in diameter. So uh, if I was to use, let me just unscrew that the I just a second okay so I removed the bearing on the on the half inch one remove the bearing on the three height one and use the three height bearing on the half inch bit uh, use a little washer to compensate for the bearing bearing being a little uh, smaller and then use the screw back again and with that, I end up with uh, a half inch bit with a three height uh, bearing, which leave one sixteen of an inch of an inch on each side of the bearing, which is exactly uh, the width of the uh, the actual binding. As you can see here, you can see that uh, it just it does exactly the 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 width required. This was actually cut with this this. Uh, this bit here. So came up with that and uh, I did already have those bit. The half inch uh, flush string bit is pretty common. Uh, three eight, a little less, but uh, not really hard to find. I actually had this one also in a kit that I have and this ended up being a lot cheaper than buying the the dedicated bit for, for, for this kind of, of operation. I mean, if you go on to Stumax or LMI and, and buy their uh, binding rod a bit, it will cost you uh, a lot of money. So I think my solution was uh, were pretty good, uh, and it's a less, uh, a lot less expensive. Okay, so here's the the router mounted to the jig. So as you can see, uh, I've used this little spring here uh, to compensate the the weight of the router, just to be sure that uh, there wouldn't be too much weight on the top of my guitar while, guitar while while using it to make sure that to mark the surface. Uh, so that's about it. The only uh, last thing remaining to talk about this, uh, this uh, router tower, I'd say, here is, uh, is the little uh, doughnut that you can see on the bottom. Actually, you've seen it. Uh, you've seen me making it. Let me just show you. Attach it here. Remove the battery just to make sure that you get Let's wait and we'll not turn it on actually. Oops. So here it is. A uh, little donut here is actually used to, to be sure that the, if, if I had to, uh, to have the, the whole plate lay on the bottom of the guitar, uh, the flat side would be okay, but on the bottom side of the guitar, which is actually a little curved, 
it would uh, ride along the body too far away where the arch begins to show and it wouldn't uh, allow to uh, to have the, the correct uh, height for for the cut all around so uh, this allows the the actual jig to to uh, to lay on the very edge of the guitar and uh, actually the, the little hedge here is not curved really really much so uh, it allows it to, to, to have a consistent height all around the place. So, uh, like I said, this jig is not exactly my idea. You can uh, you can find a lot of uh, plans online to make those. I will not release any plans other than what you've seen in this video, but if you go online, you will definitely find uh, both commercial versions of this, uh, of this uh, jig and uh, DIY versions too. So, this is mine, uh, came out pretty good. Uh, I will actually leave you after this video with a little demonstration of how it works, but if you want to see it more in action, just watch my next video, which will be all about uh, me cutting those binding channels on both of my body, guitar bodies and uh, gluing the actual binding all around. So the last part about this, uh, this jig is this little, uh, let's say, guitar caddy here. Uh, which is uh, again pretty basic but uh, actually required because uh, again about uh, because of the the arch top bottom of the guitar uh, you can just lay it flat on the table uh, so I had to came up with this uh, type of thing which is adjustable uh, both in height like that and uh, this is just to to actually do some clamping on the body so it can uh, rest safely and I'll do to move it around the table uh, so again not very complicated but uh, actually pretty clever again and uh, not my idea uh, once more uh, I just borrowed it uh, from some other uh, places online but made my own version of it uh, I used some uh, cork uh, sticky stuff that I had uh, it's actually just cork sheets that uh, with a uh, uh, with a sticky back that I I did glue to uh, to this those little clamps here plywood so it wouldn't mark the guitar while clamping it and uh, uh, just maybe a last note about marking the guitar uh, I first I thought about uh, 3D printing this little donut here. Uh, I actually own a 3D printer and this design wouldn't, would have been pretty uh, pretty easy to, uh, to make and print on a 3D printer, but I got a little uh, concerned about plastic actually marking the top of the guitar while riding along. So that's why I decided to, uh, to do it on the lathe uh, out of wood and I use uh, lumber wood, uh, construction lumber actually uh, made of uh, of spruce which is uh, normally a uh, pretty soft wood so I figured it wouldn't uh, mark the top of my guitar so that's it like I said I will leave you with a, a few images of uh, me using this, this jig so you can have a quick uh, overview of how it works but uh, if you want to see it more uh, check out my next video where I use it for for cutting my my channels